Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Thursday, September 26th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Michigan State game is in two days. The game against Michigan in 65 days. Earlier in the week, we had Ross Fulton, one of the X's and O's gurus of Buckeye Huddle, on to talk about the Ohio State offense. That was just nothing but a good time, in the words of Poison. Lots of touchdowns, lots of stuff that had Ohio State fans smiling. Today, we're going to talk about the defense. Uh, there is no, no promises of nothing but a good time today. However, one place you can always have a good time is at Jeff Ruby Steakhouse in Columbus. When Ross is on, we are sponsored by Jeff Ruby's Columbus, proudly offering nationally acclaimed USDA prime steak, seafood and sushi, impeccable service, live entertainment, and an attention to detail that is simply unmatched. Just go to jeffruby.com slash Columbus to learn more and get check out the menu and even make a reservation today. All right, Ross. This was a game where Ohio State won by five touchdowns and no one was real happy with the defense afterwards. When we talked to Ryan Day and Jim Knowles on Tuesday, everyone seemed like they were in a little bit of a surly mood. So you said before we were recording, this is one of these things where there's potentially good news, potentially bad news here. Let's just go ahead and start walking people. Let's let's use some therapy words, thinking, feeling. I think I feel I know. Let's try and get everyone through this. Let's talk about the Ohio State defense. Sure. Well, yeah. So, right. So the optimist take is that Jim Knowles has purposely been keeping things vanilla. You know, you want to challenge your players in situations that aren't schematically ideal, that they are aware of these issues and that, you know, they will be buttoned up going forward. And I, I can give an example of why that might be the case. I think. The pessimistic take are these, the things that we're going to, that I'm going to point out here are issues that we've discussed before on the show that have troubled me. Um, there are things that we saw against Michigan last year against Missouri in the bowl game. Um, and so the, the pessimistic take is they either are okay living with it, which I guess you can, you can do that. Um, you're going to give, you're going to leave yourself vulnerable to giving up these sort of you know, drives when you do that, um, or there's just disconnect on the staff in terms of what needs to happen um, to fix some of these issues. So, uh, you know, but I think this to me explains what the problems were against Marshall more than anyone else. Marshall had a bye week. They had a chance to, to scout, obviously, and they, they exploited areas uh, that have, you know, myself and others have pointed out in the past for the Ohio State defense. All right. So the first two plays we're going to be doing here, it's the offense is in a basically the same formation, two by two detached. Ohio State does two different things. The first one we're going to talk about, they're in cover four. So let's walk us through this first play. Okay. So we've talked about this, that Ohio, Jim Knowles and Ohio State is increasingly using this cover four, sort of a base cover four where the, the corners are over the top. The safeties are able to come downhill. Um, <clears throat> Marshall really spread Ohio State out. And what Jim Knowles likes to do is, um, he is, he wants to cover people up, right? If you're the, you know, the number two or inside slot receiver. So Marshall has one on both sides here. He's going to make sure there's, there's bodies over the, them. Um, there's plus and minuses that helps take away RPOs and reliefs. Uh, it leaves you lighter in the box. So obviously, like, you know, it is, not a fancy football concept to understand that if you have two deep safeties, you have one less body of your 11 players to put closer to the line of scrimmage than if you have one deep safety. And so when you play split safety coverage, like cover four, like Ohio State is doing here, and you have spread out and you want to cover up both uh, uh, slot receivers, now you only have five defenders inside the tackle box, right? And so Marshall has five offensive linemen. They have a running back and obviously they have a quarterback that they can run as well. So now, and there's with five, even in this look with five offensive linemen, you have six gaps to account for. Um, so you have, you know, C gaps on both sides of the outside of the tackles, B gaps between the guards and tackles and A gaps between the center and guards on both sides, but you only have five guys in the box. So this gets to the first issue, which is that Sonny Styles as the will linebacker, he's walked out over the boundary. Uh, slot receiver. He has to both play and cover four here at this flat, the boundary flat. So he's one of the three underneath defenders, but he's also responsible for the A gap to his side between the center and the, and the guard. And I think, you know, as, as you can see just from a, a still shot, 
that's quite a bit of distance to, to cover. Um, and so, you know, once you run the play, what Marshall does is they combine, we just talked about this with Ohio State, they combine a uh, hitch to, to Styles aside, so an RPO hitch with the inside run. And so what Styles needs to do is he is now what would be called put in conflict. He has two different jobs. He needs to sit on the hitch or he, and he also needs to fill the a gap run. Um, and so because he's sitting on the hitch though, it's going to be really difficult for him to get to the a gap, which we see here. And so, you know, then if you go to the, uh, behind the, the offensive line angle, you can see the same thing. And so I, you know, I diagrammed out here that, you know, the, a, each gap again, as I said, we've got, you know, Cody Simon, who has this as the Mike linebacker, he's the one linebacker left in the box. He has the B gap to the running back side and Styles is going to have the backside A gap. But as you can see, like with the diagram, Styles is obviously nowhere in the picture. That gap needs to be covered. Um, so in effect, what happens when Marshall runs this play, Cody Simon needs to do, uh, he basically has to tread water and he is, he is not literally two gapping. He doesn't have both gaps, but in effect, that's what occurs because Styles has to play the RPO. So what Simon's trying to do is sort of hide behind the nose tackle, and you literally can see him kind of hopping in place. And, you know, you hear people complain, well, the linebackers aren't playing downhill. Well, there's a reason. If he plays downhill and commits to one of those gaps, the running back's just going to cut the other way, uh, and it's a big gain. And so, I mean, that happens anyways because it's really hard to do what he's trying to do. But what, you know, there's, again, this is this gets to some of, my frustration, I guess, and this is sort of a continuing thing because there are techniques to do. I, I, as we've talked about, like I support playing cover four split safeties, especially like in the modern RPO game. Like, you know, we just heard Mel Kuyper complain last week that they should outlaw split safeties at the NFL level. Like there's a reason that this is being effective at limiting big plays, taking away the passing game. So I conceptually, I don't want them to stop doing it, but there's things they could do. So like little things, right? So like if you go back to the design where you see the behind the, um, the front seven. So like, for instance, one thing they could do is to the side where you want to flip your defensive tackles. So like the side, the linebacker is overhanging. You want that guy, that to be the side where the one technique is the guy between the center and the tack guard instead of three technique. Why? Just because it, it just it's simply one less gap that Styles needs to come all the way over to cover, right? So now he, he'd have the B gap instead of the A gap. So that's one thing. Another thing you can do is, you know, the football term for it is called have your defensive end play a heavy technique. All that means is like the defensive end is to like to Styles' side where you're at the overhang uh, is, um, and by the overhang, I just mean between the tackle and the wide, the slot wide receiver, like he reads that that offensive lineman. And so when the offensive lineman blocks to him, he basically squeezes inside and essentially tries to take away the B gap. And so now styles, they're basically trading responsibilities, right? So Jack Sawyer would become responsible for the B gap. Styles now has the C gap. The benefit of that is now he's in less conflict, right? Like he doesn't need to get in and fill a, a gap. If the ball bounces outside, it's easier for him to then, then commit and play it by that point, the C gap. So there's these little things that you can do within like running the same exact scheme that help again. It like, it doesn't help on this play that like JT Tumulo out like shoots up field. Um, I, you know, I, I think again, like optimist pessimist, like I think Ohio state planned for Marshall to be very pass heavy. Like you can see it in some of the stuff they did, like the linebackers were sort of taking pass drops when it was like first and 10 or third and short defensive ends flying up field though is like, it's not helpful here. It just creates a ma massive hole. And like Marshall, everything was like, get the ball out quick RPO. So like all the more reason I, I, to your point about like the Ryan day press conference, I personally picked up a sense of Ryan day sending a message that like, we're here to play the game, not try to rack up sacks. Um, and like, you got to take with the, you got to play the offense that you're facing. And that's not always going to be five step drop. And we need you to do your job. Um, that comes through on this play, but like, Beyond just like individuals doing what they're supposed to do, again, this is all a long way of saying there are techniques. They don't need to throw the whole thing out. There are techniques within this that could help them, um, you know, be more successful running cover four schemes. All right. So the next one 
Same basic offensive formation, two by two detached again, but this time Ohio State's in a cover one. So that's a very different look. So how, how does this one work out for them? So this is like, you know, we talked about there are different ways to deal with this, right? And so, you know, we talked about when you have one high split safety, now you can <laughs> cover every all the receivers up and put your linebacker back in the box. So, you know, this one, you can see Marshall checks and you can see Ohio State check, right? So they, they realize during the game that this is an issue um, and they, they bump over. And so Latham Ransom picks up the slot receiver that lets style slide back in the box. And now he can take his, that gap, right? So now you have six, six guys in the box for six gaps. Now, Marshall, you can see everything's an RPO, right? Like Ransom is playing from depth. So they throw the bubble. Ohio State limits the gain, but like you've now canceled out the run. So that's what, that's what he has to do. The problem again is, you don't want an offense to be able to dictate to you all the time what you're doing, right? You don't want it to be like when we see these kind of spread formations, we have to play single high cover one because then the offense is going to exploit that. They're like, oh, we know that. We're going to run mesh. We're going to run man beaters. Like you need answers within your scheme so that the offense doesn't necessarily know. So there's like, you know, and we, we I'll get into this with the next clip. There's like stuff, again, you can do up front, stuff you can do in the coverages and cover four that allow you to to minimize the conflicts for the linebackers because it just, you know, again, I, I have some sympathy. Like when I hear Jim Knowles say, like, no one played well enough to be player of the, of the week in the game. And it's like, that might be true. I'm, I'm sure, you know, from a coaching perspective, you want to send the message, like, no matter what I call, like, I want to see you guys dominate against the Marshall. But like, on the same hand, like, he needs to take the responsibility too because it's really hard. Like a Sunny Styles, any linebacker, is never going to get look good when you're 10 yards outside the tackle box and you both need to sit on the hitch and then be able to fill to limit a run to three yards or less. Like it just, that's not possible even for an Ohio state player against Marshall. All right. So now we're going back to cover four this time, instead of two by two, where there's two receivers in each side of the field, we're talking about a trips formation. So there's three receivers on one side of the field. Walk us through this next one. Yeah. And so, okay, this is, I've got now two clips coming up. One's, one's for the pessimists out there, which this is. And then the last one I'll, I'll give you a end on a bit of optimism, right? So the, and I say this is for the pessimists because again, this is an issue. Like if you go back to the Akron game, I think I, I highlighted the same thing, right? With trips, um, and how they Akron exploited it to the boundary. And so again, same issue, but with trips, you're going to get the, and now it's the Mike walked out instead of the Will linebacker, right? And so we have the same issue. Like Cody Simon has to split the difference. It's called, you know, sometimes the term apex is used between the tackle and the, the inside trips receiver. And now again, he needs to suppose, sit on the RPO because he has responsibility in that alley and cover four. But he also has to now fill that place I B gap that I highlighted. And so again, you're just in the same six on five situation. I think what what I've highlighted about this situation that makes it even uh, so potentially worse for Ohio State is that the way they're defending this now, Denzel Burke is responsible. And this is, it's called trip snub. It's a fancy term, football term for the fact that when an offense puts three wide receivers to the field and then they're tight end to the boundary, right? So you now have the passing strength to the, to the wide side of the field. You have the run strength to the boundary. Ohio State has their corner responsible for filling an interior C gap. Um, and again, like I, this happened there, Missouri scored their touchdown on the same thing where I State had to play, had their corner trying to fill on an interior C gap. And it was, you know, it's a tough ask for any corner. Um, so again, like these are sort of concerning things. Um, I think because they're just keeping their cover for so basic, like a concept we've talked about, like we talked about what they could do in interior wise. Right. So again, like if you have the three technique to Cody Simon's side right here. Um, you know, if you, if you change the defensive ends up such that, or the defensive tackles, excuse me, such that they have to fill from, you know, a less of a, of a uh, distance. Right. And if you keep the defensive end, if you, and you don't just need to, you, you could, you could pinch the defensive end, you could slant. You saw them stun a little bit more as the game went on. Anything that gets the defensive end playing that B gap. So the linebacker can play the further out gap. Right. But then you can also do things in the coverage. So like here, for instance, like one concept you could use is mix in a poach coverage concept. All that means is that like the backside safety here, Latham Ransom and cover four is going to help 
to the opposite side on the number three wide receiver. And so really all you're doing is you're rotating your passing strength or you're rotating your coverage to the passing strength. And that allows you to bump your run co- defense back towards the boundary or the run strength, right? Because if you have the boundary safety coming over, now your linebackers can play more towards the run. So again, not things they have to do every time. It's just things that they can mix in so that an offensive quarter can't know, Hey, I can get in trips, trips nub here and I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to lead on Denzel Burke into the boundary or corner. Um, so again, these are issues. That's why I say, like you'd say they're keeping it vanilla. They're challenging them, but they do keep popping up. So I, I do think it's a systemic issue that, that should be addressed. All right. So there you go. So the, the concerned people. There you got your time. Now we're going to get some equal time for the people who are maybe a little bit more optimistic about things. Last one is a three deep, three under zone blitz. Walk us through this last one. Yeah, exactly. So suddenly after a game of and a half or a half and a, let's say almost three quarters of this on the last drive that the most of the starters were in, it was like a total role reversal from Jim Knowles. So on that last drive, we saw multiple zone blitzes, a nickel blitz, a boundary safety blitz. Um, they ran some three buzz. All of this is to say, like, whether it was Jim Knowles finally got tired of it, Jim Knowles wanted to put stuff on film to say, like, future opponents, not so fast, you're not going to get away with it, or what. Um, it was just a, a pretty big shift. So I guess for the optimists out there, like, know it's in the system, and <laughs> they can do it. And so, like, again, this is another way, right, to, like, mix it up on the defense, right? So they're showing cover four at the snap or a split safety look. But what they do then is essentially they rush five, right? So they're bringing the uh, Mike linebacker, Arvo Reese, who looks like he's in that overhang position. He's now going to blitz into that B gap, right? So he no longer is in conflict. He's coming. So now you've got all your gaps covered, right, with five guys coming up front. And CJ Hicks has a six gap. It was still in coverage. You're now rotating down Caleb Downs. Obviously, this fools the Marshall quarterback. So he he thinks he sees Arvell Reese coming. He thinks that overhang is now not accounting for the RPO. So he pulls the throw, and you almost have a pick because you're rotating into it. And so again, like not saying that it's like you should do you should zone blitz every time, but I do think that this is another way. There's just this is another example of how they can change things up. It's in the system. I'd like to see more of it. I think, you know, you see complaints off also about the pass rush generally. Um, again, like, I think it has to be tempered by the fact that nearly everything Marshall was doing was like an RPO. Like, the ball was getting out very quickly, right? So it's just like your opponent, as Day said, can somewhat negate your pass rush, right, by doing that. But, like, there are ways to help your pass rush between either, like, just rushing your front four or bringing, like, like the one third and eight, they brought a six man cover one blitz. There was no one on the middle of the field and it was a conversion. Like we've talked about these before. I know probably ab nauseum <laughs> about like using more creepers, which are just four, the same concept, but a four man pressure where you're bringing a linebacker and dropping a defensive end. You know, a zone blitz is bringing five and running like this is a three deep three under behind. So it's essentially like a cover three variant. Um, but again, so these are ways to help your good pass rushers too, because. The offensive line, like anything else, like if they know they can expect, I'm going to have the defensive end coming at me every time, it's easier to block. Whereas now if you're moving people and they don't know where the rush is coming from, that just makes them a split second slower. Uh, and so that that can help your pass rush, not just the, get the guy who you're blitzing to home, but to help your regular pass rushers like a Jack Sawyer, um, you know, have a little bit more success. Is there something that people can kind of look for that's a simple, hey, this is a sign that they're maybe digging a little deeper into the toolbox on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of them, right? Like if you see guys coming from different angles, I mean, I think you're, you know, the base case, right, you're looking for is like if they're in split safeties, um, you know, where are the linebackers, right? Are they walked out like you, I showed you with a Styles or like on the two by two or Simon on three by one? So, if, like, if you just see them sitting out there in split safeties, then you know it's a pretty base concept. Um, if you see them moving around, uh, you know, showing pressure, coming from different spots, right? Like, you, they show two eye safeties and they drop down to one, or they're in one and drop back to two. That shows that um, 
you know, not even creative as being the right word. Just keep he's keeping the defense. He's he's reaching more into the toolbox box to keep the offense off balance and making things. You know, we talked about like on the offensive side, like plays iterating off for each other with Chip Kelly, right? Like runs, play actions, RPOs. Like this is just the defensive side of that, right? Like you show cover four, you rotate down to cover three, you you get to cover four, you run cover four, but you slightly change up the responsibilities in it just so the offense doesn't know it's coming. Um, and so, you know, the more you see guys sort of moving from where they were statically pre-snap, I think that is sort of a key you can see live during the game. Well, you can start watching for all of that at 730 on Saturday night on Peacock when the Buckeyes take on Michigan State. And then you can talk to Ross about all of that stuff on the huddle board presented by Jeff Ruby's Columbus as well. That's where our whole team of insiders is covering the Buckeyes, having conversations with you, answering your questions, making you a smarter football fan. Kevin, Tony, and I covering the team, Mark covering recruiting, Ross, Mikey, Justin, Devin. We got a whole team of X's and O's guys there just to answer your questions, make you a smarter football fan. That is all at BuckeyeHeddle.com. Right now, we're running a, a flash sale, just $4.99 for your first month. Just go to BuckeyeHeddle.com, click subscribe today at the top of the page, get access to that full team of insiders, great coverage of the Buckeyes, and much, much more. Also, make sure you, if you're watching on YouTube and you have not watched more many of our videos before, make sure you are subscribed to our channel, youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. Make sure you hit that bell as well because we post all sorts of different videos. Have a new behind the scenes video coming out this week from behind the scenes of an Ohio State football game. I think you guys are going to enjoy. We have plenty of coverage from up in East Lansing as well this week. Starting Friday night, we'll have plenty of coverage of the team and pregame coverage, our usual pregame shows. Have some probably a live show on Friday night. Have our usual live post game show as well. Tons of coverage this weekend, and then of course we'll also be back on this morning show next week, talking offense, talking defense. We'll see if it, he is as optimistic about the offense, and we'll see if he is a little more optimistic about the defense. Only one way you can find out though is by being subscribed at YouTube.com/slash Buckeye Huddle, hitting that bell, make sure you get notified every time we post a new video. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.